Hi everybody. Uh, this is lecture one for week eleven. So last week I have uh, I have done uh, two lectures for topic uh, six, uh, and then at the uh, uh, at the end of last week, I think the. In the last week lecture, uh, I stopped at uh, like several slides before the end of topic six. Uh, if the slides that I have uh, that I have not uh, explained uh, relevant for your syllabus then later i will do lecture uh, related to that slides uh, but i think the lecture that i have made for topic six is sufficient for the syllabus of uh, this course so we will see i will check and if i need to do lecture for remaining slides in topic six then i will do it later so this week uh, we will see uh, topic 7 ok this topic is about performance measurement system I think you have uh, you have you have seen this topic before uh, but uh, in this course uh, the performance measurement system will be uh, covered in more uh, detail uh, so you will see several issues uh, in detail okay this is the first thing that you have to know investment centers many firms use profit centers to evaluate managers but firms cannot use profit alone to compare one business unit to other business units because of differences in size, differences in operating characteristic. So the thing that the slide, uh, the, the, this, this first uh, point, want to, to explain is, is it is like this. In general, in accounting, we, uh, we evaluate the performance of a business or. A department or a, a branch of a business uh, by seeing at the profit the higher the profit then we will say that the better the performance but that kind of uh, general uh, way of seeing the performance is not is not is not good because uh, the departments or the branch of this uh, branches of a business or or unit uh, are different in terms of size and difference in terms of characteristic if we compare to departments for example or we uh, we compare to a segment of a business they located in different uh, location so uh, segment one is located let's say in KL and segment two is located in let's say in in, uh, in Kuantan so let's say we see that uh, segment A in KL, the profit generated by this segment is uh, 100,000 dollar per month. Uh, segment B, located in Kuantan, generated profit 50,000 dollar per month. Uh, can we say that uh, segment A perform better than segment B? In general, it looks like uh, acceptable, but actually it is not. Uh, we cannot say that because in KL, the market is big. 
the total population in KL is like maybe more than the total population of Pahang. So we cannot say we cannot use uh, uh, profit only to measure the performance of a, a segment of a business or two businesses. We cannot see only at the profit because the the different in terms of size and and also the characteristic of the segment or business. Okay, so to evaluate the, uh, the financial performance of investment centers, we need to somehow incorporate the level of invested capital into the performance measures. We cannot look at the profit only. We have to to use something else uh, to scale the, the profit uh, so that the comparison is fair. Uh, so in general, we use asset. Uh, for example, we use asset. We compare the profit and asset. Or we compare like uh, in other situation, we can use sales, profit and sales. Then we, could, we will see uh, the number will provide us with a better comparison. Here, the, the number is related to investment. Investment is, uh, is most of the time related to, uh, to asset. Okay, that's it. Financial performance measures for investment single business units. Single business unit, SBU. I think it is a short form for the single business unit. Strategic objectives of financial performance measures for investment SBUs or single business units uh, motivate managers to exert high level of effort to achieve the goal of the firm. So these are things that related to strategy. Uh, yeah, you remember that this course is uh, advanced management accounting course and it is more about strategy, how to make things good for the business, the business uh, or the organization. So these are the things that are related to strategy or how to make things good for the business or organization. So, uh, for performance measures, if we, if you have to use performance me measures in a business or in, uh, in an organization, then you have to make sure that the performance measurement or measures uh, could motivate managers to exert high level of effort to achieve the goal of the firm or the organization. So performance measures is not only uh, something that you can use to, to, to see whether the, the business or the segment is good or not. But try to make it uh, good or can motivate managers to, to, to achieve goal of a business or an organization. Second thing is provide the right incentive for managers to make decisions that are consistent with the goals of top management. Or goal congruence. So the second thing about the performance measures is we have to design the performance measures so that the the goal of the single manager is consistent with the goal of the top management or the goal of the business or the goal of the organization. Uh, if we do not uh, create uh, a performance manager that can can make the goal of the manager consistent with the goal of the organization then the the performance manager is not good uh, it can make the manager uh, to do things uh, in contrast to uh, to the benefit of the uh, organization as a whole Okay, point number three, fairly determine the rewards earned by the managers for their effort and skill. ROI or return on investment, some basis for comparison between units of different size. Okay, fairly determine the reward earned by the managers for their effort and skill. So, uh, performance measure uh, should be created uh, with 
uh, this point uh, you, uh, the performance measure has to be related to rewards uh, fair rewards uh, to the managers in accordance with their effort and skill if the manager is good he's supposed to get uh, fair rewards uh, if the performance measure is not good then the then uh, one of the characteristic of a not good performance measure is the manager is not rewarded uh, fairly based on his or her uh, skill and effort so so performance measure is something that is serious it has implication on the behavior of the managers if the performance measure is good and fair then the manager uh, the managers are going to be happy and they will cut if the performance manager uh, measurement is not good and not fair then the manager will not uh, will not will become uh, demotivated okay so uh, measures of financial performance investment centers so i think you have uh, you are familiar with this term uh, there are like three centers i think uh, investment centers uh, cost center and profit center I think this one is is uh, this topic is uh, specifically discussed about performance measures that uh, uh, for investment centers. Okay, just to refresh your memory, uh, an investment center has control over uh, over revenue, cost, and also investment. Uh, that's why. Uh, that is uh, an investment center. A profit center has con has control over revenue and cost only, and cost center has control over cost only. So investment centers, uh, the things related to this topic is investment centers. Okay, three alternative measures. Uh, that can be used to evaluate the performance or the. Per the financial performance of investment centers are return on investment. Second one is residual income. The third one is economic value added. Okay, return on investment. Uh, I think most of you have seen this. I think I have uh, this ROI uh, has been covered in ACT 3132. Uh, or management accounting too. This is management accounting three. You will see the same thing, but uh, the explanation is um, more about. Uh, uh, in the explanation is more detailed. Okay, let's see. ROI is the most common measure of investment center short run financial performance. The higher the percentage, the better indicated financial performance. So ROI, the basic formula for ROI is. Profit over uh, investment, but uh, ROI also can be calculated using the this formula. ROI equal to return on sales uh, times asset turnover, or ROI equal to profit over sales. That is the return on sales. Uh, now we are looking at the blue box here. So ROI equal to profit on uh, over sales uh, times sales over asset. In practice, be aware that there are different ways to define profit and investment for purposes of determining determining ROI. So before this, when you learn about ROI in in maybe MA two, uh, we calculate the ROI using uh, the formula, the best, the formula that you can see in the blue box, profit over investment. But now you have to aware that there are different ways to determine profit and investment for the purpose of determining the ROI. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, this is more detailed. 
So the this awareness is like uh, you have to wear that. Uh, like you have learned in financial accounting, uh, there are many ways to calculate profit, to define profit. Uh, actually, if you have learned uh, accounting uh, at advanced level, and also if you have done your your internship, you will know that there are many ways to calculate the profit. Sometimes we can uh, the bis a business can decide. Uh, whether to show highest profit or low profit or something like that so there are many ways to calculate profit and also uh, to calculate and define profit and also there are many ways to define and calculate investment uh, now we have to worry about this fact when you want to use ROI in an organization or a business you have to wear that the way to define or calculate profit and the way to define or calculate investment, there are many ways. So that's the thing. See, okay, this is the next thing. The two components of ROI give a more complete picture of management performance. Goal should be set for each of the two components measures. So uh, according to this, this notes and this textbook, uh, a better way to calculate ROI is to, to show both the return on sales and asset turnover. You can check the previous slide. The, the, there is a simple way to calculate the ROI, uh, profit over investment. That is the simple way. But the ROI also can be calculated using uh, using two uh, ratios return on sales times asset turnover okay see here if you use these two ratios to calculate the ROI it gives you more complete picture about the performance of management okay or performance of a business segment so return on sales okay see the post the first point here, return on sales or profit margin, a firm profit per dollar per sales dollar measures the manager's ability to control expenses and increase revenue to improve profitability. Asset turnover, the amount of dollar sales achieved per dollar of investment, measures the, ma the management ability to increase sales from a given level of investment. So these two ratios shows different thing. ROS shows the ability of manager to control expenses and to increase revenue to improve profitability. Asset turnover measures the ability of a manager to increase sales from a given level of investment. That's why the the using of these two ratios it will give clearer uh, picture about the management uh, capability or performance. Okay, the, this is an example, ROI example, compute city sells computers, software and books in three locations, Boston, South Florida and Midwest. The company's profits declined in the Midwest last year. Compute city operating results and the corresponding ROI calculations appear on the next slide. Okay, see here. There are three locations or segments. Okay, we look at the table at the bottom of this slide. computers, software, and books. Return on sales in year 2009 for computers 4% in year 2010 2% uh, asset turnover 4% and 4% for computers. Uh, software 10% and 10% return on sales asset turnover 1.5% and 2% books 4% and 5% for return on sales 
and 2.5% and 2% for acceptance over and then you can see okay, see this uh, slide uh, try to remember the, the things that you can you can see here so to calculate the ROI uh, this slide shows that you have to uh, to calculate return on sales first times asset turnover okay you can see here uh, for computers the ROI is 16% in 2009 uh, decreased to 8% in year 2010 software 15% in 2009 20% in 2010 see the ROI books 10% in year 2009 10% also in 2010 okay the summary analysis okay the overall ROI has fallen from 14.4% in 2009 to 13.5% in 2010 mainly due to a decline in overall ROS okay we can see here the ROI in year 2009 the ROI is 14.4% uh, in year 2010 it decreased to 13.5% so almost uh, almost 1% drop then the drop in ROS is due to the sharp the sharp decline in ROS for the computer unit. See the computer unit, the the asset turnover is same, four percent and four percent, but the return on sales drop, fifty percent drop, from four percent to two percent in year two thousand ten. Okay, according to this, the drop in of uh, in ROS is due to the sharp decline in uh, ROS for the computer unit. The ROI drop because of the decline in overall ROS. See the of uh, the overall ROS here, six point one percent drop to five point one percent. That's why the ROI decrease. Uh, the asset turnover is increasing, has increased. So we can see clearly the re why the ROI decrease because the re the drop in ROS. And then check the previous slide. ROS shows about what? ROS shows about the ability of a business segment to generate profit. So that is the thing that we can see from this uh, analysis. And software is the most profitable investment unit as measured by the ROI. Uh, the the computer unit is the the worst one. Uh, decline in ROS uh, is due to sharp decline in ROS for the computer unit. So like I said earlier. Uh, when you learn about the ROI in ACT3132, the analysis is simple. Now you have to see everything in detail. So you have to remember uh, what uh, ROS, uh, ROS shows about what and also asset turnover, turnover uh, shows about what. So then you have to know how to, uh, to interpret the number like this. Okay, so that is the ROI. The calculation now is a bit complex. You have to use the two ratios. And then you have to know how to interpret. Based on the total number and by looking at the number related to the two ratios. Okay, now. Accounting policy issues and ROI. Things to consider when ROI is used to evaluate relative performance of investment centers 
so like I said earlier now uh, now you are in advanced uh, management accounting course so you have to aware about many things you have to accept the fact that there are many methods to cut to do things and also uh, every method has uh, strength and weaknesses so you have to aware about this these are the things that you have to aware when when you use ROI to measure performance of a business segment or an organization the first one depreciation policy the determination of the useful life of the asset and the depreciation method affect both both income and investment larger depreciation charge charges reduce ROI so like I said uh, so this thing when you calculate ROI always remember the ROI can be affected by the depreciation policy if the business use straight line method the ROI will produce different number if the business is using what uh, reducing balance method then the ROI will be uh, different uh, the ROI is affected by the uh, depreciation policy and the second thing is the capitalization policy the firm's capitalization policy identifies uh, when an item is expected to as is expense or capitalized as an asset an expense item reduce the numerator numerator of ROI and a capital items reduce the denominator of the ROI so remember the to calculate the ROI the basic uh, the basic formula is uh, profit over investment so the capitalization policy uh, can affect the the profit and also can affect the uh, the investment so you have to worry about it so when a business uses ROI so we we now everybody has to aware that there are several things that can affect the ROI it is not simple like before like uh, before uh, when you see the ROI is high then we can say that you know, that, that is good now before we say that ROI is good we have to aware that this ROI can be affected by many factors including the depreciation and the uh, capitalization policy for inventory uh, inventory also can be uh, can be uh, can affect the ROI In inventory uh, you remember you learn about the uh, inventory in financial accounting uh, inventory there are several methods that you can use to to calculate the cost of inventory uh, you can use FIFO, LIFO or average method I think uh, the most frequently used is uh, FIFO or average method maybe so now you have to wear uh, the, the choice of a business or organization to use FIFO or life uh, or FIFO or average method or maybe LIFO or other methods if there are other methods will affect the ROI because different methods will produce different cost of uh, inventory and also different cost of goods sold number so when it the 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 method affect the cost of goods sold then the profit will decrease if the cost of goods sold increase and then if the method affect the asset when the asset increases then uh, the the asset turnover will will be affected so these are the things that you have to wait defining the roi measure okay how is investment defined which assets should be included in the measure of the of investment so see first point here investment is commonly defined as the net cost of long-lived assets plus working capital 
a key a key criterion for criterion for including an asset in ROI is the degree to which the unit controls it. Only those controllable at the unit level should be included. The value of intangibles also uh, to be considered. Allocating shared assets. So for a big business or big organization, sometimes the uh, assets are shared. So how to deal with this situation? Management must determine a fair sharing arrangement. Assets should be allocated according to the peak demand if user units require high levels of service at periods of high demand. See many factors. How should investment be measured? The amount of investment is typically measured at the historical cost of the asset. So this is the typical one. You learn in financial accounting, the asset has to be recorded at the historical cost. Historical cost, the second point, the historical cost is amount of book value of current assets plus the net book value of the long-lived assets. Net book value is the asset's historical cost less accumulated depreciation. This not a net book value is uh, is an item that you always see when you calculate the depreciation net book value. A problem arises when long lived assets are significant portion of total investment because historical cost often does not reflect current market value. Relatively small historical cost value equal to significantly uh, overstated ROI uh, and the illusion, the illusion of profitability. So if the an investment is uh, investment uh, on a long term asset, so this is the problem. Uh, the asset has to be recorded at historical cost but the life of the asset is very long many many years so a question arises about 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 the value of the asset when the roi is calculated so that is the thing that is explained in these notes you have to worry about this measurement of a measurement issues of ROI asset can be measured at either historical cost, uh, net book value or gross book value at, uh, or at some measure of current value. Net book value is historical cost less accumulated depreciation or amortization. Gross book value is the historical cost without the reduction for depreciation. Uh, replacement cost represents the current cost to replace the asset at the current level of service and functional functionality uh, that's the purchase price liquidation value is the price that could be received from the sale of the asset sales price or exit value so this is exhibit uh, 19.3 compu city has three marketing regions 15 stores in the Midwest, 18 stores in the Boston area, 13 stores in South Florida. Current value information appears below. See Midwest, income 26,000 and then net book value is 192,500 book value. You can see the numbers here book value, replacement cost, and liquidation value. So you ho I hope you can follow the definition in the previous slide. And now see this table. Boston area, South Florida. See the numbers here? Okay, ROI. Let's see the ROI. Okay, when uh, if you use, uh, when you calculate the ROI, if you calculate the ROI, Remember the basic formula is uh, profit over uh, investment or income over investment, the same thing. So see here, if the investment, the value of investment 
is recorded using NBB, the ROI is different. Gross book value, if the as the investment is recorded at gross book value, then the ROI is different. Replacement cost is also different. Liquidity, liquidation value is also the different. So it shows here uh, the way you define the investment. If you use different way, you will get different ROI. That is the thing that you have to wear. Okay, see this, this uh, analysis, summary of analysis. At first glance, the Boston area appears to be the most profitable. But when the edge of the store is factored in GBV, the ROI figures for all three regions are comparable. Replacement cost is useful for evaluate, evaluating manager's performance. Replacement cost, remember, what is the replacement cost? The replacement cost is the value of the investment or asset if the asset or investment is sold today. So, liquid uh, re replacement cost. Uh, no, no, no. Not sold today. Uh, the value of the investment if the investment or the asset, the value of the, uh, the investment or asset today, if the business wants to purchase the investment today or the fixed asset today. And then the analysis of liquidation based on our liquidation based ROI is useful for showing city management that the real estate value of the stores of these stores could now exceed the the value as city retail location. So the you can see one of uh, another thing that you can uh, learn from the numbers is uh, different uh, numbers for the value of the investment or asset will produce different ROI and also different numbers like GBV or historical cost or liquidation cost or replacement cost you can use different numbers to analyze and to analyze different things you can analyze about the manager's performance, the uh, real estate value, that are the two things. The, and, and then you can, uh, you can see more from the numbers. Strategic issues regarding the use of ROI for performance uh, evaluation purpose. Purposes. Value creation in the new economy can this be captured by ROI measures? Short run focus on the metric numerator issues, denominator issues. Decision model and performance evaluation model is a model in inconsistency. ROI has a disincentive for new investment by the most profitable units because ROI encourages encourages Units to only invest in projects that earn higher than the units current ROI. Okay, what are the things that that you 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 can see from this slide? First, value creation in the new economy can this be captured by the ROI measure? So there is a question. What do you think? If you use uh, ROI, can you? Do you think ROI can be used to evaluate or to measure the value creation in the new economy? Uh, now, the economy now is not like uh, traditional economy. So, ROI, can ROI capture the value of the value creation in the new economy? Uh, it can measure some, some, some aspect of value creation, but it is not all. We have uh, seen before in new economy, most of the time the the value or the benefit or the the good things about new economy can be measured financially, and also there are many aspect of the benefits or good things about new economy cannot be measured uh, financially. So if it the ROI can can be can capture the financial aspect only. 
Okay, that is the thing that I, that I think related to the first point. Short run focus of the metric, numerator issues, denominator issues. So that is the thing that you have seen in the previous slides. Uh, denominator and numerator of ROI can, can be affected by many factors like depreciation, uh, policy, capitalization policy, the the calculation of cost, etc. Uh, decision model and performance evaluation model inconsistency, NPV versus ROI. So one of the thing about ROI is uh, the maybe the there will be inconsistent is inconsistency uh, between the decision model adopted or used by a business and the the performance evaluation model used by the same business so for example here net present value versus roi so uh, when you calculate roi uh, you do not consider uh, the time value of money so that is one thing that is the thing that is question, uh, raised in this uh, slide so this is the thing that you have to also aware about about the use of ROI in a business or organization ROI okay this one is the most common weakness mentioned about ROI it can encourage sorry it can discourage uh, a unit or a segment from taking new investment uh, if the current or uh, ROI of the business segment is let's say 20% and there is a new investment the, inv the new investment is profitable maybe the new investment uh, ROI is 18% so the, the business unit uh, may not take the new investment because their current ROI is already 20. If they take the new investment uh, of 18% ROI, the total ROI for the department or business segment will decrease. So that is a situation that that show that ROI can discourage uh, a business segment to to not to take new investment. Okay. Okay, these are the summary about the advantages and disadvantages or limitation of ROI. I have explained all. Uh, hopefully, you can follow. Uh, so, this is the summary. The main advantages, there are three main advantages of ROI. Easily understood by the manager, by managers. Second point here in the blue box, in the left side of the slide. Uh, comparable to interest rate and the rates of return on alternatives investment. Number three, widely used and reported in the business press. The limitation, the limitation first one is goal congruency issues. Incentive for high ROI units to invest in project with ROI higher than the minimum rate of return but lower than the unit's current ROI. And then comparability across investment centers can be uh, problematic. Okay. Okay, I will stop here. Uh, this is the first lecture for topic 7. Uh, thank you very much. Do not forget to write your name and metric number in the comment section.